We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Doing good, doing good, doing good, doing good. Um, it's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. Problem is, Kyle, is we got three minutes into this recording once and tossed it away because my audacity started breaking. So I already cracked it. So uh, does that work? Sure. That works. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Sure. Listen, the the audio is going to be weird. We we released a couple episodes where my audio was skipping and we were only three minutes in. And I'm like, nah, we're not doing that today. So, you know, Fair we enough. just we just ran it back. We only got three minutes into it the first time. We're just going to run it back. It's all good. All right. Before we get to know our enemy, Nebraska, uh, to no surprise here, as everyone suspected, uh, Josh Simmons out officially for the year. And in comes the uh, fourth year offensive tackle is in uh, Mikowski to fill in for Simmons. Listen, we're all very Zen here. This is a very Zen podcast. We center ourselves. We meditate. We are a very Zen podcast. We try not to get too high. We try not to get too low. This is a very meditative, very Zen podcast. All right. Even though I missed out on the ASMR opportunity. I was totally, I want everyone to know that was a totally different response than I gave the first time we started recording. Uh, Here's the response I gave the first time around. He's our best player at our thinnest position. And that sucks. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's get to know Nebraska. Uh, Coming into this game, five and two, two and two in the big 10. Started off, Pretty well, pretty well this season. Took care of business for um, all three teams beginning of the year, including a uh, solid win over Colorado. Overtime loss to Illinois. A closer win to Purdue. A very low scoring game victory over Rutgers. And then the, uh, the Hoosiers mm-hmm. boat raced them last week. 56-7. 56-7. to seven. 56 to seven. This isn't a, oh, they lost by two scores. Oh, they lost by 17, 20, 56 to seven. Kyle, do you think, do they have boats in Indiana? I hope so. They're on the lake. Yeah, there's a lake there. It's a great lake state. It's, it's, it's one of the, it's one of the, we have water in the Midwest, but we have, contrary to popular belief, we actually do have coastline in the Midwest. Um, at, at least in the Great Lakes states, we do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Kyle, do you think in the the line for this game is Ohio State minus twenty five and a half? Mm-hmm. Do you think this line is this big if Indiana didn't just absolutely no. rock Nebraska last week? No, I I, I would expect this to be more maybe. Maybe 10, 10, seven points less. I was that much, like maybe like 15 um, and a half, 18 and a half, something like see, that. See, I was still thinking it would be like 2021, 20, personally. Um, is that, and don't answer this. I don't think I would trust a boat from Gary, Indiana. That depends upon if you've had your tetanus shots or not. Um, it, how would is, is and don't answer this, Kyle. Is that a predictor of your pick if Ohio State's going to cover this game or not? Don't answer. Answer that later. All right, Nebraska. Um, the big name here, uh, actually, as I look at this in OBS, the highlights actually kind of make this hard to read. I'm going to turn those oh, off. Doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, it actually worked really great with the with the uh, Oregon colors last week, so I thought I'd try it again. But the red makes it terrible, terribly hard to read. Um, Dylan Riola, he's the poster boy of this team. He's a freshman. Uh, he's a freshman. Uh, we've seen Riola be really good. I mean, he is really good. Don't get me wrong. He has a very bright future. Um, uh, he will be a very good quarterback. 
that being said, he's a true freshman and he has his true freshman moments and mm -hmm. the utter demolishing that they took uh, against Indiana last week, you know, came on the back of a number of interceptions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he has nine touchdowns on the year, but he also has six interceptions in but true freshman fashion. In true, true freshman fashion, he's also taken 14 sacks on the year. He needs to learn that he can't, he doesn't have the same escapability now that he had in high school. Um, also notable is that he is not running. Um, he only has 21 rushes on the year. Uh, and 14 of those are sacks. Uh, he's at minus 89 yards per run and has no touchdowns. So two thirds of his rushes are sacks. So he's only rushed it seven times. Yeah. So in the past month here, in the past month, he's been sacked as Jared said here, he's been sacked. I'm just recalculating here again. Yeah. Sacked 11 times has thrown four interceptions and only threw one touchdown in the past month. So and he, since and, the and, Illinois and, and, game? And he, has, and, he has, and he has not thrown um, better than 65% of his completions. So is that the last four games? Or the last, last three games? Uh, three games. Last three games. So not been the same guy the last three games that he was like the first three or four games. Part, part of that is you know, talent level getting competition. tougher competition. And also part of that is just being a true freshman, right? Like you, you come in, people don't really have tape on you yet. Um, they get tape on you. You're a little less of a mystery. And also like another thing people need to take into account. There are a lot of high school seasons that are ending right now. Um, at least the regular season. So, you know, or will be ending soon, I should say. Oh, sorry, he was sacked seven times. I was looking at the wrong stat. He was sacked seven times. It's still a lot. Yeah. Um, I would also, a uh, word also is that Nebraska's offensive coordinator and quarterback coach isn't doing shit to develop him. He, I, I'll just say this, and I don't know, I don't know much about uh, Marcus Satterfield, to be honest with you. Um, like, I don't, I don't know much about him at all. Uh, this is mm -hmm. his second year at Nebraska. It, it's hard to yell at development when you're only f five games in, or I guess seven games in. Um, he followed rule from Temple in the Baylor days. Yeah, and you know, there are certainly some some good quarterbacks at at Baylor. Um my camera's doing goofy things again. I think Discord's messing it up. Uh that's okay. We keep recording. Um so yeah, there's but there, there is talent on the offense, even outside Rayola. Uh, they have three running backs who get significant carries. The the top one being Dante. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that last name. I'm not going to try. Uh, 81 rushes, 350 yards, averaging over four per carry. Um, like I said, uh, he, he's good. The numbers aren't tremendous. I, I think he's. I, I don't know. I don't know how good the Nebraska offensive line is. And I think that plays into everything else. They have a, a, a pretty deep, pretty talented wide receiver core. Um, Jamal Banks, Isaiah Nair, uh, Jalen Lloyd and Ja'Cory Barney. They're spreading out their receptions somewhat evenly the exception being Lloyd who only has nine reception, nine receptions, but 217 yards off of just nine receptions, a big play guy. Look out for that. Um, 
and Nair is their their touchdown nabber for sure. Uh, he has four touchdowns on the year. Yep. Yeah, I, I think one thing that's really surprising for Nebraska, I mean, Nebraska is always known for solid defense, running the ball, but it's kind of not been the case, especially last game, but more for the season, they, they haven't really had that much success on, on the ground. They're averaging no. 120, 127 yards on the ground. And I, you're, you're not doing your, your true freshman quarterback any favors if you can't establish that run game. You're putting it on the, the back of a true freshman to try to, to win you games here. Yeah. Uh, yards per rush at 3.4 as a team, mm. p- placing them 105th in the country which is, I'll just say notably bad. <laughs> like that's, that's bad. It's not, it's not yeah. very good. In fact, it's bad. Um, if you compare their team stats offensively to defensively, their defense is doing most of the work. Their offense is getting a lot of the attention. They got the young quarterback. He's exciting. You know, he wears number 15 and kind of has the same haircut as someone who's really famous. And, uh, you know, everyone gets really excited about it and he gets a lot of the media attention. You're the defense is doing the work in Nebraska right now. And you're scoring 25 points a game. Yeah. And the defense is, well, I have it at 23 on my stats. Um, notably my stats exclude FCS teams. Yep. So, you know, uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So if we, if we take a look offense versus defense points per game, offense 80th in the country, defense 27th in the country yards, offense 83rd in the country, defense 14th in the country. Uh, that's yards per game yards per play 95th for the offense 21st for the defense. The rushing yards, 105th versus 16th. Yards per pass, 78th versus 45th. The offense in Nebraska is getting a lot of the media attention. But if you've watched Nebraska, if you just look at the numbers, it's the defense, it's the defense that's doing the work here. If Nebraska looks like a better football team right now, than they've looked like in the past couple of years. It's not because of their quarterback. It's because of their defense. Mm-hmm. Kyle, who, who on that defense should we keep an eye out for? Uh, honestly, it's, it's their, I mean, they list him as their defensive back, but he's, he's kind of all over the field. Uh, Isaiah uh, Gifford leads the yeah. team in tackles. Isaac. Uh, yeah. Right. He's going to be all over the field. I got to keep, got, got to keep an eye out for him because he, he's, he's going to make plays there. Uh, the linebackers are pretty solid too. Uh, they get in the backfield quite a bit here. Uh, both uh, John Bullock and Mikhail uh, uh, Gabor. Gabor. I'm, I'm not saying that. Gabber. <laughs> uh, but they, I don't know. They're average. They, they both have 10 tackle for losses combined. Um, but on their, on their secondary though, uh, their, their two, their two safeties are pretty darn good too. Um, Malcolm Hadzog has three interceptions already for the year and Deshaun, a uh, singleton, um, has had a pretty good season as well. You look at is Hart, is Hartzog tackles, a safety 30, or a corner? 32, 32 tackles seems like a lot for safety, but he, he really, plays up a lot from, from everything that I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have heart, I have heart sog as a, as a cornerback. Am I wrong or are you wrong? Uh, I mean, from what I pulled up, from <laughs> maybe both. Yeah. Maybe both. But maybe both. The official thing that I see, he's listed as safety, but maybe, maybe both. Yeah. Maybe both. But I think, I think the one, the one, I think the one thing that, Nebraska really struggles defensively. It's, it's their defensive end. Like I, I look at their stats there. They're, they're not disruptive. They're not disruptive. I don't really see, I don't really see them really 
making a lot of plays. Their interior definitely are. Their interior um, making a lot of um, noise. There, Ty Robinson. Their their um, their I guess three tech and then um, Nash uh, Huttmacher. Uh, their nose tackle. Um, I think their interior is really solid, but I think their defensive ends is what's really struggling for Nebraska's. Uh, they front they do stand. have they do have young James Williams on the team at defensive end, who I think is a very good football player. Uh, he's starting to put some sacks on the board. Um, I think he's a true sophomore. If not, he's a redshirt sophomore, but I think he's a true sophomore. Um, I think he has a lot of talent. Um, but yeah, the, I think the important takeaway here is that this is a, a very disciplined, very, what's the word? I'm very assignment focused, very, I think discipline was the correct word. I don't know why I was trying to one up the word discipline, but I think it's, it's very Iowa-esque in their defense. It's not... Mm-hmm you know, it's, it's, it's not players with a ton of recruiting stars necessarily, but they're very good at their jobs. They're well-developed and they know their assignments and they execute them well. All right, Kyle. Um, anything else you want to talk about in regards to knowing our enemy, Nebraska Cornhuskers? Yeah, I, I I just reiterate just reiterate defense pretty solid. I think though yeah. would not surprise me to see Ohio State struggle early on, not not putting together drives early on, but get it together as the game goes along there. But I really think that Ohio State's defense will find the adjustments that they need to make following that Oregon loss. See, seeing and listening to what uh, Ryan Day said in his presser on Tuesday, um, and identify where the issues are and uh, address them. So, sure, it's just got to trust Coach Day there, and hopefully, fixing those issues and really, really just making Nebraska's offense is non-existent here because uh, the <laughs> the past few games they they really they really haven't been seven points against Illinois, fourteen against Rutgers only 28 to Purdue. It doesn't really scream that it doesn't scream to me that this is a, this is a good offense. These past three games here. Yeah. I mean, it's, he's a true freshman quarterback and, and I don't think, and while I do like their wide receivers, I I think it's largely being carried there. Um, They have offensive line issues. They have, they they have issues on the offense. Um, and I understand that their offensive coordinator isn't super popular among the fan base. I don't know how fair or accurate that is. Um, but when you, when you have an inexperienced quarterback and a subpar offensive line, I don't care who your offensive coordinator is. You're going to struggle at times. Um, uh, and as far as Riola goes, um, I think he he's 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 young, he's he's a little immature, as anyone would be at that age, and as a result, I think if you let him get in rhythm and you let him get confidence, he's going to make some plays. But if you get in his head early and tilt him get him inside of his own head, get you get in his head, he gets in his head, you press on him a bit, he's going to start doing dumb stuff. So, you know, this would be a good game, in my opinion, to like not give an inch. This isn't a sit back and let things happen in front of you game. This this is a game, in my opinion, where you suffocate. And, and I think that's the game plan here because you just can't let Raiola get get a rhythm that that's yep, what you can't absolutely. do. Absolutely. <laughs> Every time you tackle him, just say nice play Jackson Mahomes and he will be rattled. That's listen, not, not on my worst enemy, not on my worst enemy. 
that's that's a step too far. All right, Kyle. Uh, now would be a great time for our first ad break. Uh, so if everyone wouldn't mind, take a look at the screen if you're watching on the YouTube version of the show. And please visit the sloopcast.com. Um, from the sloopcast.com, you can find links to all of our other pages. Uh, cause that's basically all the sloopcast.com is, is a, is a landing page for links from there. You can support us financially, uh, for as little as $3 a month at patreon.thesloopcast.com. You get a bunch of cool benefits for that, that are listed on the website. Um, you can hang out with us. Kyle and I are very active in our own discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. There is a premium section to the Discord, but the vast majority of the channels are free. Uh, YouTube.thesloopcast.com. If you're watching us on the Buckeye Huddle page, first off, just keep watching us on the Buckeye Huddle page. We love our partners at Buckeye Huddle. Uh, but also, we're just trying to get our subscriber count up over on the, on the YouTube.thesloopcast page. Um, so please check that out. And we have two merch stores, but we'll talk about those in the second uh, in the second ad break. So, uh, with all that being said, that's the end of this ad break. Here are those, uh, here's the podcast ads now, man. I really fumbled that ending. Whew. I, I straight up the fumbled the end of that. That's the, that, that's the end of that ad, but here's some more ads. I'm off my game. We haven't done Know Your Enemy in like two weeks. I'm rattled. We had to throw away the first recording. I'm rattled. I'm done. It's over. Anyway, um, Kyle, it's time to do our predictions. Um, before we do our predictions, our guest picker this week is the one, the only, the famous gangland. The one, the only, the famous gangland. Um, one of our mods in the Discord server, a longtime fan, longtime Patreon supporter, uh, a valued member of this community, uh, and everyone who up until this point who I didn't give that introduction to is going to be really mad that I gave that level of introduction to Gangland, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> all right. First prediction, Ohio State player to watch. Kyle, who do you have on this one? Oh, this is this is tough because I, I I really I really hope I really hope to see the defense improved here. I know a lot of a lot of, a lot of people look at the secondary and how bad they look, and rightfully so. But I mean it it starts with that often it starts with that defensive line. Like you can't if you're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. I don't care how good of a how good of a secondary you have, receivers are going to get open there. So, I I'm going to say player player to watch here. It's it's I don't know. I, I, I'll 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 just go with JT. Like I want it's more for like the defensive line. But I, if I pick a player, I'm going to just going to say JT. What I want to see some I want to see some pressures. I want to I want to see these guys like get angry like start start winning your one-on-ones and start making plays there. So I really want to see the, this defensive line be disruptive. Uh, I'm going to go. Uh, I, I feel like, I feel like the defense is going to take care of itself. I think this is going to be a good defensive football game. I'm going to go with Zen. This is a Zen podcast. We're very Zen here. Give me Zen to be the unexpected hero that we didn't know we were going to need to step in and take over this, take over the starting left tackle job, which, you know, I, I, I don't know how many people are optimistic that he can do so. I personally am. Um, it's, you know, he's been with the team for a while. Sometimes people just need an opportunity to step into, and he has an opportunity to step into. Well, as you can tell in the chat here, Jared, uh, that is uh, why that was our guest pickers pick as well. Oh, is that is that why people yeah. are they don't Austin didn't know that? <laughs> why why 
Why is Austin booing me then? That might be why oh, no. you were. Oh, oh because of the Zen joke. Zen joke. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, uh, you're just going to well, get used to that. I'm doing that for the rest of the season. Uh, all right. Well, Ganglands is Zen as well, too. Excellent. All right. Uh, does um, he have, did he give an explanation on that? Uh, he says, has huge shoes to fill in with Simmons going down and his development down the stretch is really going to determine where this team goes in terms of their goals. We know that beating Teton is as much as a lock as possible. But what about the Big Ten Championship? Natty, that all falls on this guy, um, how this guy plays for those huge moments because everyone knows that he is going to be the one to pick on. All right. Um, enemy player to watch. I got Gifford. Yeah. I got Gifford on for the um, uh, Nebraska's defense here. Like, they got to slow Ohio State's offense somehow. And why not pick their best defensive player? It's simple as that. I'm going to go with the young pass rusher, James Williams. Um, you know, it, it'll depend upon a lot how they line stuff up. But like I said, young, good pass rusher, Ohio State struggling at the offensive. Maybe they're, they're Ohio State's in flux at the offensive tackle position. He'll be a guy to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. All right. In gangland, picks Rayola. He picks yeah. Rayola as his uh, enemy player to watch. He says, uh, Brothers struggled against the mighty Hoosiers. Can he pick it up this week against the Buckeyes defense that is ready for vengeance? I don't think I really, I don't really think so, but any chance Nebraska has in this game comes down to how he performs. I later bring up how the matchups of wide receivers and defense defensive backs will be huge for success in this game and Royola's ability to give a good jump ball or just put in the vicinity could be dangerous based on our DB's last performance. I mean, to be fair, like, you could say the same thing with Nebraska. Do you have any confidence about Nebraska's offense based on their last game performance? I mean, no. You, you got to play it both ways. Don't just look at a Ohio State and how, how bad the defense looked against uh, one of the top teams in the country yeah. versus how Nebraska did against um, Indiana. He's a good team, but not a top team in the in the country. You got to look at it both ways there. Who had a worse time two weeks ago? Was it Ohio State getting ripped apart by Dylan Gabriel? Or was it Oklahoma fans who had to lose to Texas and then watch their old quarterback rip up Ohio State? Anyway. Uh Key matchup. <laughs> Key matchup. Um, yeah, it, to me, it's Ohio State. Ohio State's offense will get it done. This is this is a good defense. This is a very good defense. Um, but I don't think that it's an invulnerable defense as Indiana proved. Now turnovers played a huge role in that 56 point <laughs> issue that they had, that they had last week. So that's not all on the defense, but I think that they have uh, one of the, one of their weakest positions is defending the pass for Nebraska. So this is a game where to me, you're going to see a battle between Ohio state's wide receivers and the Nebraska defensive backs. So that's my matchup to watch. All right. And mine, mine is sticking to a theme here. It's the Ohio state's defensive line versus Nebraska's offensive line. It, this defensive line's got to, got to figure it out. They got to find a way to, to, to get it home, to make, make plays when those are one-on-ones. Um, yeah, they got to get that done. And and honestly, too, like the um, no one says got to can't rely just on the on the defensive line just to win their one on ones. He's got he's got to be creative. He's got to. He might be able to gotta, this game. 
Yeah, he, he's got he's got to not be very vanilla on the defensive line side and be a little creative out there to give the defensive line up um, opportunities to make plays as well. But that's okay. just that's just my 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 opinion. All right, um, Gangland says uh, DBs versus wide receivers. We know what happened to these guys against Oregon. Upholding the standard is everything they talked about during the offseason leading up. But they failed their first marquee matchup to show. They really were about that. Nebraska also has a very different style of uh, wide receiver room of tall, lanky guys that can win a jump ball and pose a threat against a secondary that really struggled when actually thrown at. Nebraska also has a good matchup at tight end who can also do the same. The addition loss of, of Lathan Ransom highlights this matchup even further, and it's a major Put up or shut up day for them against a young Pat Mahomes wannabe clone. Yeah, th- that's not confirmed, although there is a lot of smoke about Ohio State not having ransom this week. Again, not confirmed, but there's enough smoke out there that you can kind of, you know, you can kind of assume that that's going to be the case. It'll be interesting to see how they shuffle things around. Um, yep. This is a thing we're talking about pretty extensively in the Discord server that I don't necessarily know is within the scope of what we're doing here today. Um, you know, sort of can Hancock move back to safety if you're going to be running a lot of four three, or you know, like do you do best eleven or do you when you switch to four three do you continue to take Hancock off the field? I think that's an interesting discussion that we that we'd had in the in the Discord today. Uh, that I don't necessarily have a strong opinion on. Um, I think a lot of that just depends upon, you know, how do you, how how well does Hancock know the safety position? Is that possible for him to pick up in in a week or do you rely on Matthews to come in and do it? Uh, It'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. If in fact the rumors are true and Ohio State won't have Lathan Ransom this weekend. Yep. All right. The spread in this game, uh, CBS Pickums locked it in at 25 and a half. I'm curious if that, that line uh, jumped at all. Uh, Cause I have not, I have not been paying attention a, a bit right before we came before we started recording and it stayed the same. It stayed the same at 25 and a half here. So um, I think Ohio State will cover here. I, I think they they just got too much uh, bad taste in their mouth. Uh, unfortunately, that they had that week off that they couldn't get back on the field to, um, to yeah. get that out. So I think they're ready to get back on the field in Columbus here at noon. I, I have to I have to think that Ohio State's going to get it done here. Offensively, they're gonna they're gonna put up numbers, and I think the defense will find a way to uh, keep keep Nebraska in check here and really really hold them really hold them down. So I do have Ohio State to cover as well, and I have, I have a score of uh, Ohio State forty two, Nebraska fourteen. Um, I think Ohio State might. Do you think, do you think, because I don't, but do you think that Ryan Day or maybe more likely the fans are looking at that 56 to 7 mark put up by Indiana last week and thinking, we could do that. Like, is, is that a standard that they're looking at saying, guys, Indiana can do it. I'm just, are, are they looking at that as a goal? I really don't think so because I mean, they, it's not like they have to compare themselves to another team that they won't play because they will be playing them. So I, I really, I really don't think so. I think they're going to be more focused on fixing the things that went wrong against Oregon, correcting those and just focus on the opponent that's in front of them, not worried about, how how another team did against uh, wow, this opponent here. I can tell you watch the uh, 
you know, you can watch the press conference today. That was the most coach speaky answer I have ever heard you give. You know, we're really just focused on the opponent in front of us. We're not really worried about <laughs> Kyle, Kyle went full deciphering day mode on that. <laughs> I did. I did. Um, sorry, I'm supposed to be given my final score prediction. You did. You did. Uh, yes. What do you got? Um, I, I don't think they're going to aim for it that bad. Um, in fact, they don't think Ohio State, listen, <laughs> There were a lot of turnovers and a lot of weird circumstances that led to that 56 to seven. Um, so it's unless Ohio State gets those same like huge, you know, deep in Nebraska territory turnovers like Indiana got, I don't know if they're going to put forth the effort to get 56 to seven. Um I think it ends up, I do think seven is a good mark. I do think that that's a good goal that they can and should hit. I like seven for Nebraska. Uh, I'm not going to go full 40 or 56 for Indiana, but I am willing to go about 45. 45 to seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If they can, if they can be single digits, like nine points or yeah, less, yeah. I'm thrilled. I'm I'll thrilled. even take a 10. I'll even take a 10. Yeah. All right. Gangland. Gangland says here he has a final score of 52. The 13. So a little bit, Set little bit more than what a little bit more than what uh than what Jared uh Jared had here. He says big response game for this team with the matchups discussed earlier. How will the run game look down a top lineman? How will how will uh pass pro be? Is this team neutered now or are the goals still on the table? Time will tell, but go Bucks and beat the shit out of some corn huskers. Austin, you don't know that you thought at first. Maybe I'm just trying to do a better job of not interrupting Kyle. Huh? Have you ever considered that I'm just trying to do a better job of not being an interrupty, uh, rude person? Did you take your medicine today? I did. <laughs> Speaking of Austin, it's time for Austin's over, over, over that. Austin's over unders, but we're going to take a quick ad break before we do that here. So as mentioned before in the first break, the slipcast.com is where you can find all of our lovely doobly dinks, links, doobly links. <laughs> wow. Kyle, I, so, I failed the landing. You're failing the opening. I am. Yes. Um, Discord.slipcast.com is where you can find uh our discord page uh, where you can, where you can chat with all of our lovely sloop cats down it down in the chat here in this, um, this episode here, as well as just hang out and chat with uh, Jared and, and the rest of um, the discord family as well. And uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com is our page for the YouTube page. So if you want to see Jared and I's lovely faces on our, um, on the YouTubes, that's where you can check us out. You can find this and much other, much more links over at thesolcast.com. So we'll go ahead and take a quick break and be right back. I have my hand on the mouse. All right, there we are. All right, let's do, yeah, this is not a math pod um, or a thumb pod. But yeah, Austin's over-unders. Let's do it. All right, Rayola passing yards, 196.5. Sorry, what was the number again? 196 and a half. Ooh, um, I'm going to go under. I feel like Ohio State's defense is 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 aiming for redemption this game. Um, they're going to need to get a pass rush if they want to hit this number. I'll say that right now. Nebraska has good wide receivers. And Raiola can, he has talent, but you're going to have to get into his head and getting into his head means getting into his face. Nebraska doesn't have a great offensive line. You can take advantage of that. You're going to have to take advantage of that. If Ohio State does what they need to do as far as pressuring and keeping pressure on the quarterback, then they'll hit the under here. Yeah, it's. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm just looking Shut up, here. Austin. <laughs> I'm going to go over mainly because I think they're going to abandon the run early on here. Ohio State's, Ohio State's going to put up points and they need to keep up and they're not going to get it done on the ground. So they're going to, they're going to rely on Rayola um, more than, than they should in all honesty here. They're average. They're averaging him throwing it 30 times a game. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot when, when, um, Nebraska needs to be supporting him a little bit more on the ground there. So I'm going to, I'll go over with this one. Okay. All right. Next one here. Ohio state touchdowns by players, not named Howard, Ibuka, Smith and Henderson at one and a half. So, okay. So we get Judkins, Tate, we get Judkins, and, we get our, all Tate, the tight ends. All the tight ends. Um, This and, would include defensive players. Defensive players, special and, teams um, players, and um, and the second team as well, and Ennis, um, James Peoples. If this game gets out of hand, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to go over. I'll say over. I'll say over. I'm going to say under. Jared, Jared's Jared seeing our uh, season stats and wanting to to uh, be different for me and hoping to. Uh, to make up for the difference here. No, I'll tell you right now what I'm doing. And I did this on the first pick too. I am doing so terribly in Austin's over unders that I'm just going the opposite of my instinct. I, I have my initial instinct. You did this like three years ago. I know I did, did this, this for like the sloop picks. I did this for the sloop picks and it was like four years ago. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Listen, I know when I'm failing, I'm winning in the sloop picks. So I'm trusting my instincts in the sloop picks. Austin's over unders. I'm failing horribly. I'm whatever my instinct is. I'm just going the opposite. Thank you very much. (laughs) I did say under. All right. uh, Next one here is Ohio State defensive and sacks at 1.49. So one and a half or, or under 1.49. Yes. That, that is, that is that there. Yes. Um, I'm going to go under. <sighs> as much My instinct as I'm was to say over, I'm going to say under as, as much as much as I want to say over in this one here, I just don't have the confidence with with this team from what we've seen from what we've seen so far here. Like they they just don't they just haven't really gotten the sacks re- recently. Uh, they got four sacks against against Sparty. Um, I'm failing to pull up how many sacks they had against. Uh, against Purdue or Iowa. I mean, I could tell you they didn't have any set. They didn't have any sacks against Oregon at all. No, but, and it has to be the defense events. Yeah. Um, well, actually they had four, um, Hussey did have four sacks against Iowa, but looking at defensive ends, yeah, that was, that was two sacks. That was two yeah. sacks against Iowa here. So, um, you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to go over, you know, what? I've changed my mind. I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over here. Uh, just, Main reason I'm I'm swapping swapping over is Rail is going to pass more. He's going to he's going to have more attempts to throw the ball, more opportunities for defensive ends to to get home. So hopefully hopefully I'm right. All right. Um. Uh, all right. Uh, next Nebraska pick. yards per carry at two point eight eight nine. Under. Is it my turn to pick first under? I think it was I, me, but that's, that's fine. Um, you know, so, sometimes, sometimes I wish I looked. No, no. Okay. Here's stuff. the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I said under, because that was my first instinct, but I actually really believe myself this time. Uh, and I really believe myself, but even if I really believe myself, I should still say the opposite of what I'm thinking. Therefore I should say over. I don't know what to, I, <laughs> are you okay, Jared? No, Jared. Are you Listen, okay over uh, there? No, 
Austin posted the season long over under stats in the in the discord today. And it's in my head because I'm doing so badly. <laughs> he, it's in my head. I'm still going to go under here, which which means it's going to be over because under is my actual instinct. Uh, I'm going to go <laughs> I'm going to go under as well. I I just think that they're not going to get it done on the ground. And Rayola is going to throw the ball more. So I would not surprise me if they get three yards or more a carry, but I'm, I'm going to trust uh, Ohio State's rush defense um, more than their pass defense. All right, All right next um, pick. Yes. Ohio State total tackles by non non linebackers at 39 okay. and a half. He wants us to know that the linebackers include Styles, Hicks, Powers, and Pierce. And Simon. I yeah, I don't know why my mind skipped over that. Um I don't know. He, he's 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 still in your head here, Jared. <laughs> yeah. My first instinct was to say, uh was to say under. Gosh, I again I, I wish I was able to look at these games. A little more, uh, but I mean, I, that doesn't. Hold on, it, he he does he does have styles. Oof, I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under. It's absolutely. I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to go over. My instinct is to say under, so I'm going to say over. <laughs> uh Austin says 42 a game on average for non linebackers per game. Okay. But Austin, the last time you Oops. did last time you said something like <laughs> this, we caught you making shit up. That's a real stat. That's what a liar would say. Austin. All right. Iowa state team rushing yards for the game at 200. And 14 and a half. They, they, they haven't got, they haven't gotten over. Uh, this, this doesn't have the stats for the Iowa game. Um, did they get over that? No, they didn't even get that in Iowa. They've only gotten over that once all season. 214 yards only once. And that was against Marshall. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. They need to get that against Western Michigan. They haven't done that against a Big Ten opponent. Right. I, I got to go. I got to go with the statistics and, and say under. I'm just going to go with Kyle on this, even though it's my instinct to to agree with him. I'm actually going to agree with him. Um, they've yet to play Ohio State. No, he was giving you Ohio State numbers. Ohio State has failed to do this uh, against a actual power for opponent. Um, Nebraska has a really good rush defense, 16th in the country yards per rush. They have a pretty mid pass defense. So, so that number, I, I see where you're coming up with that number. Cause 215 is the number that Indiana had rushing against Nebraska. <laughs> He's either playing I'm, stupid I'm, or. I'm calling you is. out. I'm calling you out here. <laughs> All right. So we picked, we both picked under on that one. All right. Uh, and then the last one, non Trey and Judd rushes. Minus, Minus tight, tight end catch, catches. At 13 and a half. I, I don't know what you're doing under. I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> okay. So rushes by not the two main running backs. So we get quarterback rushes. We get James people rushes. That could be six. Let's say that's six minus tight end catches. It also could be, you also get some end arounds and stuff, although they tend to like to throw those where they're technically throws. Um, so, I mean, if I look at the stats here, uh, it still feels like a lot minus tight end catches at 13 and a half. I don't even know if the total I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go under here. 
Howard could rush 14 times by himself. Yeah, he could. I don't think he will, though. He doesn't need to. I don't think he doesn't need to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Under I'm going under Ohio state actually averages 16.5 non rushes by those two's a game. Okay. I'm telling you but, I was deep in the weeds. Okay. But what are the stats in the past in the big 10 games? Cause that is, that is so skewed from Marshall Western Michigan and Akron though. So skewed. Yeah, I agree with Kyle. I, 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 I think I believe I believe uh, James People was had like eight rushes per game. I want to say on average in in those um in those games just in by the pre Big Ten and then, season. And then, yeah. So that, I mean, that's only that's only eight there, and Howard not really going to run the ball. And then you're saying, oh, you're subtracting some if there's a catch by a tight end, which by the way. Um, uh, G Scott's been getting the ball a little bit more recently here. So he's had, he's had three catches against Oregon, three catches against Michigan state. He, there's a good chance in this game, he's going to get a pair of catches or more. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I feel confident with the unders there. So do I. All right. Um, that's it. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Oh boy, you went right into that. Uh, <laughs> I did, I did. Uh, um, we're like we're like fifty one ish minutes, so you know. I don't. I I really don't don't have anything. I I know mentioned in our earlier episode about the the crew playing next week here. So I'm excited to see how the how the crew is going to do this. This off this off season here. Hopefully they can get it back to back um championships here, but we we shall see. All right. Um anything else in Kyle's corner? Nope. I think we're good. Are we good? All right. Um, I guess I have a quick Jared's corner, if you don't mind. Um, I want to encourage everyone to go vote. Early voting available now in most states. I know it's available in Ohio. I know most of our fan base listens in Ohio. Early voting now available. Everyone go vote. Even if you just vote on the local stuff. Even if, if you don't if you don't like some of the national stuff, I, I I hear you. There are still very important local ballot, local uh office positions that you absolutely need to be involved in. Everyone go vote. How was that, Kyle? Did I? Did good I do enough. that well? Good enough. good enough. You're just going to give me good enough. Okay. Tonight's ending music brought to you by uh, the Raging Nathans, a uh, punk band from, I'm going to say Dayton. I could be wrong about that. Might be Cincinnati. I forget. County treasure. Y'all need to get involved in your county treasurer races. It's the most under, I, I don't know anything about, it. I don't, was, was county treasurer involved with the county budget, I assume. Is that what that is? I have no idea. Um, no, I have no idea what a county treasurer does. I'm purely guessing based off of the name. Know your comptroller. And with that, I'm out. <laughs> Voting is an act of aggression. Uh, sh okay. That's an interesting take, Zach. Um, all right. So uh, that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by the Raging Nathans. So, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters and to go vote. Uh, once again, these are the Raging Nathans. Mm -hmm.